Welcome back to Blue Max 6 and part three of Anatomy of a Flight. Part three is Flying the Plan. This was a three part series that I put together based on comments that I received from you all on YouTube. Part one was planning the flight, route planning, weather gathering, risk assessment, FBO operations. Part two was pre-flight, pre-flight in the cockpit, programming the aircraft, specifically the Garmin G3000. And part three is flying the plan. As I'm sitting here after a full day of editing the video and got weather coming in here to Richmond, uh, it was amazing how many changes there were to this flight from the time that I planned the route until I actually got my final reroute and, and full route clearance. So it actually works out pretty well. Got my friend Steve along on this flight. He's a, he's a rated pilot, but also pretty good at Microsoft Flight Simulator. And so he's gonna help address some of those questions that some of you all have had for me in the comments. But I just wanted to say, one, thanks for showing up for the channel. Please continue to engage in the comments. That has been fantastic so far. And I hope uh, this three-part series is in line with what you all were asking for. Take a look and let me know. All right, welcome to part three, which is flying this thing. It's the fun part. I have with me my friend Steve. Steve and I have known each other since we were kids. Um, grew up together, which is really odd for military brats. We both had careers in the military. and have been in technology since then, but he's also a rated pilot. And he and I have flown together in a lot of different types of aircraft. All right, so I'm going to be picking up our clearance now. Kapalaka clearance, good afternoon. Honda Jet 682, Tango Mike is IFR to Foxtrot, Charlie, India. I'm ready for clearance. Honda Jet 682, Tango Mike, Kapalaka ground. You're clear to Foxtrot, Charlie, India Airport via the Foles 2 departure. Paytas transition, then is filed. Maintain 2000. Expect flight level 410, 10 minutes after. Departure frequency, 128.6, Quark 2110. Okay, Honda Jet 682 Tango Mike, clear to Foxtrot, Charlie, India, via the Foles 2 departure, Paytas transition, then as filed, 2000, expect flight level 410 within 10, 128.6, and 2110 on the Squawk for 682 Tango Mike. November 682 Tango Mike, read back is correct, and be advised the Foles uh, departure corridor is currently ground stop due to weather. Two Tango Mike, thanks for that. Uh, okay. right, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and pick up a TIS. I don't have it. Yeah, that's okay. All right, so what we'll do here is and I'll show you how to do it. So that way people can see. So hit the home screen, home button, go uh, nearest, bottom right corner, go airport, click on OOPF, wave airport info. Frequencies. And then ATIS. Click on ATIS and put it number standby number two. O block tower information, Oscar. Special observation time 2108. This is special. Wind 070 at 3. Visibility 10. Thunderstorms in the vicinity. Light rain. Few clouds at 7,500. Ceiling 9,500 overcast. Temperature 18, dew point 1-2, altimeter 3010. Advise on initial contact, you have Oscar. Okay, so we're, we're programmed. I'm gonna bring up, uh, over here on the on this side, I'm gonna bring up um, the taxi chart so that we've got that up. That's our legal um, ground reference chart. Tombo 190 block ground, clear center question. Okay, flaps are set for takeoff, trims are set for takeoff. November 2 Tango Mike, hold short of Tango 3, remain this frequency awaiting release. Hold short, of, hold short of Tango 3 for 2 Tango Mike. So we had some really big changes in the weather than what we saw in the forecast. We just had, uh, we had rain most of the day today. Not the forecast, so we just had thunderstorms come through. And they just cleared. Florida. Time passes, weather changes. So I've had a couple of comments from people about uh, checklist usage. I want to make sure that I talk about that. When I take the runway, my focus is looking out 
and watching engine instruments in my V1 and rotate speeds. Um, I use a cockpit flow, that's what we're taught in the type rating. And then, so I have call outs that I make as a part of that. There's Tango 3. I see it. I use the flow until we're out of the immediate traffic area and then I go back and follow up on the checklist. The primary checklist in this aircraft is the electronic checklist. There is a publication down by my left ankle um, that has a full expanded checklist in it, but this is the checklist that we use. And there's a checklist for every phase of flight. I'm following along with Tim on uh, my checklist. And, uh, he's checking off the items, verifying, and uh, I just click go to the next checklist checklist to keep stay up with him. The symbology here to get us on the right one. Right. Right. It tells you that I, we've everything that we put in here tells us we're supposed to be on nine left. So we can see it graphically, and if for any reason we're not there, it'll tell us that we're not on the right one way. Getting a lot of comments. I tried twice a day. So far, I've been able to respond to every comment. Um, I try first thing in the morning, and usually at the evening, in the evening, to make sure that I answer those. So if you don't, if you don't see an answer right away, please check back. Um, I really like that engagement with you all getting some great questions. Like I said during our, our route planning, even the trolls. I'm even responding to the trolls. Those are fun. That's. But uh, but good question. So a lot about the checklist. A lot of people asked to say, hey, we want to see more of what's going on in the cockpit. That's great. So that's why we're doing this. Um, and if there's more things that you, more questions you have, please let me know. Here to Foxtrot Charlie India via Foles to departure Gozer transition direct Celo India Lima Mike Lima Victor Lima direct for six eight two Tango Mike. Over 682 or Tango Mike, read back is correct. Continue tack, you uh, 9 or less, and contact tower every day. Two Tango Mike. Um, I filed a route. I got cleared for a different route. I was given a different clearance. I was given a ground hold. Um, all sort of part and parcel, but we've got it programmed in. I've got it in my iPad. I'm for Lock XLR 167. I've you confirmed it in the, the box. Uh, the G3000. Lock 167, Open Lock Tower. You're behind a Learjet approaching a four mile funnel, runway 9 left, third land. Clear to land, 9 left, XLR 167. I've got another pilot backing me up. All right, Honda Jet 2, Tango Mike, traffic, 3 miles final with a Learjet. Uh, runway 9 left, cleared for immediate takeoff, flight heading 090. Clear for immediate takeoff, three, uh, 9 left, 090, 2 Tango Mike. Okay, yeah, we're going to do it. I see 9 or left. I see 9 or left too. Takeoff power is selected. I see it. Achieved. Airspeed's alive, both sides. Check. 7 Sierra Charlie, Honda Jets departure roll, no fact. 7 Sierra Charlie, thanks. You need not cross check. Two good engines. There's V1. Rotate. Maloka Tau, 1293 Tango, ILS 911. Positive right. See it. Gear up. Number 1293 Tango, block Unable touch and go, runway 9 left, low approach only. Power coming out of takeoff for MCT. Tango, Tango, Tango. Autojet 2 Tango Mike, excellent job. Contact Miami Departure now, 128.6. Have a good night. 28.6 for 2 Tango Mike, thanks, sir. Miami Departure, good afternoon. Autojet 682 Tango Mike, 1000 for 2000, 0, 9 or 0 assigned. 682 Tango Mike, Miami Departure, radar contact, contact departure on 119.45. 119.45, 2 Tango Mike. Departure Honda Jet 682 Tango Mike is uh, 2000, 0, 9 or 0 assigned. Number 682 Tango Mike, Miami Departure, Roger, climb 18, uh, 7000. Up to 7000 for 2 Tango Mike. 7000 set. I see 7000. Back to MCT. I see MCT. Pitching 15 degrees. Thousand degrees. Number two Tango Mike, turn left direct to Falls. Left direct Falls, two Tango Mike. And two Tango Mike, I'm sorry if you tuned that in. Uh, go direct Mark, actually make it Mark. Direct Mark, two Tango Mike. Direct. Flight plan. Mark. Activate now. Okay, I see Mark, and I see 7,000 feet. Alright, 
And that's a Tango Mike climb maintain 16,000. To 16,000, two Tango Mike. I see one six thousand. Okay. We're gonna go to Park Tower One Niner heading two zero three thousand climbing seven thousand. Copa two six six turn right heading to two four zero. Heading two four zero Copa two six six. Tambo one nine Miami climbing ten one six thousand. One six thousand Tambo one niner. So now I'm flying the flight director. So the pink, the pink, they're called magenta or something. Uh, that's what I'm flying. So if the flight management system is giving me guidance to fly pitch attitude into a specific fix. I like to hand fly up to 10,000 feet. It just gives me a, a good feeling for what's going on with the aircraft. If there's anything wrong, I'll tend to feel it rather than reading about it later. Good at 10. At 10? Yep. I see 10. All right, I'll go ahead and engage the autopilot. Autopilot's engaged. Engaging over here. Tombo 19, proceed to Rec Moreno. Rec Moreno, Tombo 19. Contact to Tango Mike, contact Miami Center on 133.4, goodbye. 33.4 for 682, Tango Mike, see ya. Miami Center, Honda Jet 682, Tango Mike 111,000 for 1616,000, direct mark. So 682, Tango Mike, Miami Center, see if I was, uh, is it with some uh, light brown icing uh, from 16,000 to uh, level 180 in uh, your vicinity on the departure? So I'm going to maintain flight level 410, just let me know if you uh, experience any of that. Two Tango Mike. Take a mic up to 410, I'll let you know if I pick up any nice things. 682, take a mic. Okay, 410. Right, I'm at 347. We're negative three, I'm gonna go ahead and bring engine anti-sound. Three to 5,000, Palm Beach customer 3010. Cross Prada at 5,000, Palm Beach at 347. Okay, so if, uh, if you're within five degrees, if you're positive five degrees, and you have visible moisture, we go ahead and turn engine anti-sound. All of the anti-ice systems, other than engine, are automatic. So I've got ice detectors on uh, the pilot and co-pilot side, independent of one another. And if they pick up ice, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring up uh, the ice page over here, just in case. Systems, ice protection. So you can see right now that windshields and probes, those are automatic. I brought engines on. If ice is detected, you'll see it come on for wings and tails. Okay, wing in. Ice was just detected, so wing anti-ice and tail anti-ice just came on. Okay, I'm picking up and following up through my checklist after my takeoff flow. Okay, full chop, 1769. Pressurization's coming up. Next is altimeters at, in the flight levels. Approach uh, Honda Jet 2 Tango Bike picked up a uh, light rhyme at uh, 14 until uh, about 15.2. November 682 Tango Mike, Roger, you said light rhyme, and what was the outside air temperature? Yeah, OAT is uh, negative 10 for 2 Tango Mike. Negative 10, thank you. I just brought that up so you can take a look and see what goes on with ice. So, ice is no longer being detected, so the icing systems are shutting off. What did I get? I got a light that says stall warning ice advance. I'll talk about that in just a second, as soon as we go through transition altitude. There's, we're now in the flight level, so Barrow and Barrow. So now I see standard barometric, standard barometric. Sorry about that, just want to confirm, was that light wrong? Late rhyme for 682, take a mic. Thank you. Okay, so stall warning ice advance. Essentially, if you're in icing conditions, you're using the 
you're using the essentially the, the power required to, to be de-icing the aircraft. It, it gives you different landing data. You have to have a longer, a longer runway because of the uh, parameters required. So stall warning ice advance is on. I'm now clear of visible, clear of visual moisture. I'm no longer getting uh, ice indicated. So engine ice is coming off. Next, I go systems control. I have stall warning ice advance reset. I hit that. I'll, uh, I'm basically saying I'm not in icing. I won't be landing in icing. So remove icing as a parameter for my landing. Um, all my landing figures. Okay. We're going through 21,000 feet. We're going to go ahead and shut off the cameras, and we'll catch you all as we're descending into Richmond, Virginia. Thanks so much. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, we're on the descent. We're about to 20 minutes outside of landing back in Richmond. Pretty easy flight so far. Sun's starting to set. That's the reason um, I moved some cameras around a little bit, too. We'll have to see what you all think of this. Steve was nice to get up during the flight, grab some waters, and move some, uh, move some cameras around. So, all right, what I want to do, though, is I want to go ahead and show you how we program the arrival information and the approach. 1875, Honda Jet 682, Tango Mike 6. Washington, Honda Jet 682, Tango Mike 29.5, descending 240. 682, Tango Mike, Washington, hello. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk Steve through this. Um, he's done it a couple times in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so he knows it. Um, so first thing we're, we're going to do is I'm on the descent checklist. Um, so I've got altimeters to go at 18,000 feet. Right now we're cleared down to 24,000. So Steve, we're going to go ahead and program the uh, performance information. Okay. And so that's home yep, performance. performance landing data. Landing data. Yep. So we already picked up the weather. I know the, we're going to be using runway 330, and the runway's dry. So I'm going to go to uh, so weather. Go ahead and load, load the METAR data. Yep. So it's showing 320 at 15, 10 degrees, 3010. A little different than the weather we just got over the radio yep. on the uh, AWOS. 10 degrees. All right, landing configuration. Okay, so ice protection is going to be off. Mobile landing factors, no addition to reref, and landing. Good. So let's look at the landing data. Okay, so VREF is going to be 102. We're going to have a nice headwind right on the nose, so that's going to give us a little bit of lower VREF. EAC is 107. 5501 available at 2602. Of a 15 knot headwind, three knot crosswind, and I'm, I'm going to be below my max uh, landing weight. So we'll go ahead and accept that. Okay, I've accepted the landing data. Okay. I'm going to go back home. Yep, go back home. I want to load the ILS. It's going to be a visual, but I want to go ahead and load the ILS. So go ahead and hit procedure. Yep. Approach. We're going to do the ILS 33. That's what's in there. Yep. Now, I'm going to, I'm over here. Well, I'll bring up the approach plate right here. Go ahead and uh, for the transition, instead of vectors, I want to use 1,000 feet to go. Junkie. Junkie. So we briefed just a minute ago. Okay. And so, so I've got FCI, ILS 33, Junkie is the initial prefix. Minimums for that are 417 feet barometric. So put 417 cross check and it's barometric and enter. Okay, and then go ahead and load that. Yeah, I'm going to load it, not load and activate. Right. Okay. I can look on the PFD and see that the procedure is showing there. Do you have another frequency? Our landing performance data is in. We've got the approach in. We've already picked up the weather. So now it's just going to be flying the, flying the plane. Put the approach chart up there, just for kicks. Now the other thing I did is, as the sun was starting to set, I went ahead, I went ahead and set night mode in the cockpit. Um, systems control button. Lighting configuration. I can go from night. You can see that's what happens when I bring it up to daytime mode. Nighttime mode, it's just better, and then systems control again. And Tim just brought up the flight plan. American 1150 to send via the cop, play arrival landing to the north. Now yeah, I like, to keep, I like to keep frequencies, nine. flight plan up, just as I'm flying. And, and again, there's lots of different configurations for the MFD and PFDs. November 2, Tango Mike, just to maintain 7,000, Richmond altimeter 3009. 7,000, 3009, how did that two Tango Mike? Okay, 7,000 set. I see 7,000. Okay, coming down. 
Motor man 532, watch the uh, One thing I've noticed um, in, the, in the daytime to get good video of the screens, I go 4K and 60 frames per second. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that, and this is the older version of the G3000, when we go into night mode and it senses darkness, it, the refresh rate of the screens is better and the resolution uh, is pretty good on the video, so hopefully hopefully that works. Stoke approach, Honda Jet 682, Tango Mike 14.7, descending 7,000 with the weather at Chesterfield. On the Z682, Mike, stomach approach, risk announcement is 3012, advise you of the current weather, known as the risk of example, Air Force Air Visual Press. 3012, I have the weather and NOTAMs, expecting the visual 332, Tango Mike. And do you expect him to vector us onto the final approach course? Uh, he probably will. Soon in, in looking, he'll ask us to call it out visually. So, Approach, uh, an Executive, Touchfield County, Uncontrolled Airport, there's no tower there. Right, it has radar coverage through Potomac Approach, who we just got switched over to talk to. And until we make calls in there, they're going to be very different than the calls that we made in and out of uh, Miami, Opelika. One of the reasons, even though I'm expecting the visual, even though the weather is VFR, I always load the ILS. What I found is oftentimes approach controllers will send you to a fix that's on the ILS. Um, now if it's IFR and you're given a specific approach, I load that specific approach. Uh, but when it's VFR and I'm, or I'm expecting the visual, I load the ILS. A lot of times when I'm going into BWI or other large airports, I'm always sent to a fix on the ILS. Honda Jet uh, 2 Tango Mike, descend maintain 2000. 2000, Honda Jet 2 Tango Mike. Set. I see 2000. Meter 4281, can take approach 128.52. And if you have it loaded, you'll always, always end up at the right airport on the right run. Hopefully the cameras can pick it up, but now my performance speeds are now showing up on my PF, both the pilot and co-pilot PFD. Ref speed is 102, AC 107. Because we have the ILS loaded, um, and we're getting closer to the runway environment, the localizer just popped up as a number two needle on the PFD. If you look at my active nav at the bottom, I'm still actively in FMS. That won't switch over until I activate the approach and hit the approach button. So until that time, we're, we're flying in GPS mode. But it's there for situational awareness. They kept us nice and high until we were close. It's great on fuel. It's funny. After being up in the flight levels, to be back down here in uh, Rum and Cheetah and Turkey Six land. <laughs> Yeah, when you and I flew the Cheetah, I don't think we've ever flew more than, I think the highest was probably around 8,000. I've had it up to 10. Come on, I've had it up to 11, but it's that's that's right at the edge of an envelope for a Cheetah. That was a great little plane. I had it when I was in the Army. Um, I was stationed at the Pentagon. I got deployed, and I just basically handed Steve the keys and said, hey, Keep it flying while I'm gone. It was gone a lot longer than I thought I would be. He flew it. When I got back, I thought I was going to hop in. I had actually been flying Russian helicopters provided by the Ukraine while we were over there. Uh, this was in the Balkans a long, long time ago. I got back and hopped in and was very, very rusty. It's a good little plane? It was a good little plane. Uh, uh, Jet, uh, two tango, my fly heading at 080, back to safe one. Okay, right, zero eight zero two tango mic. Zero eight zero set. I see zero eight zero. Switch to heading. Heading unlocated. Start slowing down. Throw the speed brakes out. See the speed brake extended enunciation came up here. I want to get below 200. Oh, 1,000 feet to go. Below 200. Speed brakes are retracted, bringing some power back in. I have the airport in sight, I'm going to head to 2000, Fort Julia, Charlie, I can go ahead and cancel. 
Air Force Juliet Charlie, Roger. Uh, cancellation received. And change of eyes, strings to approve squawk VFR. Just uh, be on the lookout for a uh, Honda Jet. Uh, he'll be uh, arriving uh, just uh, probably just after you. He's about uh, 10 miles south of your position. A Unicom coming up. Port Juliet Charlie. A Unicom up, and we're monitoring it. Just field bearing on Port Juliet Charlie. Yep, zero, six, zero. Three, three, uh, zero, six, zero, set. I'm going to turn left heading zero, three, zero, zero at the airport will be 11 o'clock and one, two miles. Left, zero, three, zero, I'll call it. Six, eight, two, take a mic. Zero, three, zero, set. I see zero, three, zero. Okay, I got the field. Is that that other fellow turning on the lights? Subject approach, Honda Jet 682, Tango Mike, field site, we'll cancel IFR. Honda Jet 2, Tango Mike, uh, Roger, uh, caution for bearing three miles west of the airport, uh, LT 2200, and uh, various air surveillance clock key for change of advice, 60 approved. 2, Tango Mike. Okay, I'll watch, I'll watch on the map and look for him. I do approach flaps. Just for county traffic, Honda Jet 682 Tango Mike is a left base runway 33, Chesterfield County. Chesterfield up, Baron 814 Julie Charlie. I am across midfield. I'm going to kind of circle back. Look at that Honda Jet. Okay. And two Tango Mike, I'm slowing back. Yeah, Fort Julie Charlie, I've got the runway here um, on uh, on final, Fort Julie Charlie, thanks. Okay, two tango bike, I'm turning in final right now, uh, but I'm, I'm slowing back to VRAF. Uh, yeah, I definitely see him, 13. Thanks, man, sorry about that. No, we're good. Okay, gear. Got three transient. Three green, doors closed. Verify that. Okay. Speed brick is retracted. Below 160. Nope. Coming back down. There's below 160 going final flaps. Hope you can notice uh, the speed tape is dynamic when I went final flaps. The limitation, the red line went to 160. Okay, airspeed. I am flying ref. Hear the sound of the sort of the that's the aircraft depressurizing. Yeah, I'm looking at Arctic has has him on the on the runway getting off. It's rough. Yeah, damn to go. Here comes glide slope. And glide slope's capture. All right, just field four, Julie Charlie's clear of the active. I can verify that. I saw his nav lights okay. to the left. Chesterfield County, Honda Jet, two Tango Mike, five mile final, three three, Chesterfield County. Thanks for your help there, man. Sorry about that. I blew right past the airport. Hey, it, it worked out just fine. Yeah, thank you. I mean, if you want to buy me a beer, I won't say no, but... <laughs> I'm happy to. Come by Echo 4. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> what made the rabbit come on and off like that? Uh, it's just the timing from when he does. I'll bring it back on. Okay, so we're fully configured. VRF looks good. Yep. Light slope looks great. Right, so one of the things I want to talk about is, you know, I talked a lot about my bad approach to Tortola, and a lot of people said, "Hey, look, yeah, you, you know, you slammed that thing down." That was a normal landing. It was the approach I was talking about. Fully configured by the final approach fix. You're on speed. You're configured with flaps and gear, right? And you're flying the approach. So this aircraft very different than other general aviation aircraft. When you're in the, when you're in uh, landing flaps. On ref, with the gear down, it is the angle is set for landing. So you fly ref onto the runway. This wing flies 
all the way onto the runway. Um, most of you, and I learned when I was flying airplanes, that you flare and then you stall and you get the stall warning horn right as you touch down. That is not how you fly this aircraft. This aircraft, you fly the ref speed right over the numbers, power comes off. As soon as you touch 500. down, as soon as you touch down, your your uh, power to idle, speed breaks out and max braking. I'm about 350 feet AGL on the radar altimeter. I'm on speed. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the autopilot and the yaw dam. High correcting. A little fast and correct. Minimum. Minimum. Continue. Concur. Power's off, speed breaks out, and braking. 4,000. Okay, speed brake is retracted. Flaps are coming up. Exiting the runway. Going to the after landing checklist. County traffic, Honda Jet 2, Tango Bank, clear, runway 33, just field. Tapping time's not required, engine ATS is off, speed brake is retracted, flaps are up, trim's going to the green. There's our fella. Got him. Thanks for flying along on this part three of Anatomy of a Flight. If you followed along on the other parts, you can see that no matter how much time and effort put into planning, things are going to change. Flexibility is the key. As I look back over these videos, I see some things that I certainly can do better and will do better on other flights. You all following along and adding comments and asking questions has been a big part of helping me and others who watch these videos improve their game, whether they're sitting behind a computer on flight simulator or getting in their aircraft. If you saw value in these, I would appreciate it if you took the time to subscribe like, leave a comment, and let us know what else you're looking for. As you can see, this is far from the typical hop in the jet, go for a trip, and show what it's like to land in exotic destinations. But this one was specifically designed to highlight the questions that you all ask. Thanks for watching Blue Max 6.